Welcome to My Hard Drive Died, episode number five with Scott Moulton. Hello, Scott. Thanks for joining us again. Hi, how you doing? Very good. And Scott is from MyHardDriveDied.com. You should definitely check out that site. He is a hard drive expert, has his own hard drive recovery company, and, foren- and does uh, hard drive forensics work. And um, he's going to enlighten us today. The, the, the subject we're going to cover is overwritten hard drives is, is the subject for today. And I guess, Scott, the, the, what, I'd like to start this off by talking about the story from the, the computer forensics show, the keynote speaker from techfusion.com. There's been some news about him and his speech. He, he had some things to say about overwritten hard drives and data recovery that wasn't exactly true or what happened there? Yeah, um, pretty much what happened is the uh, there's this f- show that's put on that's called the Computer Forensic Show, and I guess one of the things that kind of brought this to light was um, this the story that happened in Boston, and uh, and apparently uh, with regards to emails and stuff being deleted, this guy was interviewed and went through this process of uh, you know describing some of the things of how overwritten data can be recovered and things along that line, and. At the same time, he was talking about this case that he had that was in Turkey, where you know there was some assassination, and that there was this drive that was overwritten, and that he actually recovered this data and this valuable data for this for this particular case. And then it somehow became that he was going to do this keynote speech uh, for the computer forensic show. So it all just starts coming to light all at once. But the issue becomes is that his title for his speech is uh, how to recover, you know, something along the lines of how to recover data from an overwritten hard drive. And so uh, all the computer forensics people, because you know, here in the United States, at least with regards to computer forensics people, um, it's, it's a pretty well-known fact from a standpoint of this data that once it's overwritten, especially on a current and modern hard drive, there's not really a way to recover the overwritten data. And so for him to make a, a a declaration that that is going to be the case, and then to be accepted as the keynote speaker, where he's going to be subjecting a uh, a large body of people to this false or fake topic, uh, seemed to you know cause a lot of people to kind of you know uh, get up in arms about it. So there's a large pe- large number of people from the forensics community who got involved. It probably with- probably got a lot of people to go though, didn't it? <laughs> Well, you know, that is another question is that, you know, by having this, you know, false information causing people that, you know, thought, hey, well, I want to know more about this topic, right. thinking that you know, maybe it's true or not, uh, may have either gone to the computer show expecting that kind of stuff or, you know, paying m- good money for something that really wasn't a benefit to anybody. Right. Uh, so, so, you know, there's false advertising, false marketing from that position as well. Uh, and there's a lot that has been brought up in question because it's just not the way to to – Proceed, especially with regards to right now, you know, computer forensics as a whole, we have a lot of issues with regards to licensing and marketing and what's true and what's false. And we really don't need to, you know, continue to take myths and try to make those a reality according to TV and stuff. We've got enough, you know, CSI information out there as it is now from TV shows and stuff saying this is going to take 20 <laughs> minutes. Um, we, we just don't need more propagation of false information, sure. especially in an arena where people are being taught or supposedly taught correct information as part of their job or part of their future. And it's um, That sounds amazing to me that that this whole thing went on. What what was what was he gaining out of this, and what did he say about overwritten drives that that wasn't true? Well, uh, you know, I was not physically at this uh, this conference itself. I wasn't really going to to join in in the middle of this whole thing. But uh, you know, ultimately, it turns out that even though the title of his talk was about overwritten drives, uh, the feedback that I got from people who were there basically came down to the fact that there was there was no real talk about. Uh, how overwritten data was recovered, and that there was you know maybe not even a discussion with regards to recovery of any deleted data whatsoever <laughs> so so the whatever the title of his topic was completely misleading that it had nothing to do with the actual content which he displayed or talked about and uh in his you know abundance of apparent you know forensics cases that he had done so but you know there's a lot of myths with regards to overwritten data and that there's this you know mythical magical machine that can recover uh files and data after they've been overwritten and there's a lot of things that I kind of want to straighten out for people so that they kind of have a really good idea about the the falsehoods and what this data actually means and what the probability of recovery is because it's it's just not 
in the realm of possibility from this discussion. Yeah, I've, I've heard about machines and that kind of thing too early on. And I think it was you who actually disabused me of all those theories I had. It's just, it's, that's just what's out there. That's what people hear. And I don't, how does it get out there? Well, originally, and you got to keep in mind too that when you're dealing with hard drives, you're dealing with with different generations of drives. So, you know, when you're dealing with stuff, say back in the 70s, 80s, and maybe even early 90s, the way that data was written was a lot different than the way it is now. And so, as drives have matured, and we've gotten into higher density drives and more modern algorithms for storing data and encoding the data on the platters, and the way that the tracks are actually stored, even since 2006, has changed dramatically, which is causing even even a larger number of problems with regards to being able to recover this data. But but primarily, it's going to end up being the density and the encoding schemes. So when you're looking at stuff that might have been you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, early 90s, um, you're looking at hard drives that um, one of the biggest changes was something called a voice coil. So in 1986, uh, Connor Peripherals introduced something called a voice coil, and the voice coil uh, basically changed how the physical drive worked. If you think about a hard drive uh, like you do floppies. So back in the day before 1986, drives basically worked fairly similar to floppies did. So right. um, they had a motor, and this motor would say, reset me back to the beginning, and then I'm going to apply a pulse of power so that I can move to a track. So in other words, if I want to go to track five, I would apply a pulse that would cause the motor – to cause the head to move five tracks. Okay. And there was no real feedback from the drive that says, I'm at track five. Okay. There was nothing that really gave them a lot of data. You're reading data back in the hopes that what you're reading back is accurate. So there was no what's really called servo information. Servo information is a feedback loop. You actually now will get a feedback that actually says, oh, here I am, and this is something that I can read. Right. So hard drives originally had this same type of technology. It was a, a stepping motor, and it would cause the head to actually move to a correct track. And the problem is, is that the track itself, uh, you may not be writing in a in in no hard drive currently. Even are you writing in a complete cylinder? Uh, it's not a perfect circle. So so there's a spot where maybe the edge of your head was writing data that would not be in exactly the same location next time it would write data. So when you overwrite data, when you overwrite that that information in that track, you would have this outside edge, this outside skew that would actually have data that would be uh, an up and down, a, you know, a, an amount of magnetism that could be detected. And the way you can kind of think of this is, you know, if you had a two-lane highway and you have this dashed line that goes down the center of the road, you have a solid line on one side of the road and a solid line on the 